Hello, today I would like to talk to you about setting up the EMS 002 Rapid Immersion Freezer or Plunge Freezer, uh, however you like to call it. Uh, comes out of the box, uh, looks like this. It has the cryogenic insert which goes inside the stainless steel doer here. Temperature controller. This is the button to actuate it. Around back. We have an accessory power uh, uh, connection for an environmental chamber. Uh, this is an older model. It actually has a uh, internet uh, connect cable which allows you to program the controller uh, that is not available on new models. This is an old uh, demo unit that we have. Um, this is uh, the actuator C2 for the environmental chamber shutter. Uh, this is for the dropping mechanism, which drops your sample into the cryogen. Uh, fuse for the condensation chamber. And then a universal uh, power uh, uh, input module, which you can change to whatever your local voltage is. Currently, it's set up to the U.S. voltage. Uh, 115 volts, um, so that's what we're going to operate it at. First thing you would do is remove the condensation chamber insert, which has uh, three or four main parts to it. It has the condensation chamber. This is the electrical connection, uh, which for the most part you leave uh, connected all the time. Another electrical connection, which supplies power and your temperature sensor uh, to the rest of the unit. A small workstation where you can work under a cold nitrogen gas lake once your sample's frozen, the base plate and the base plate locking cam. All this gets inserted down into the doer. This cable gets plugged in on top here. I've made all the different plugs and connections so uh, they will only go in one place. So you can't really mess this up. Or shall I say I made it difficult for you to mess up. What I'll do next is I'll mount the uh, drop mechanism, which I call the drop anvil. Uh, it is shipped uh, with this part facing backwards just so nothing gets damaged. And that just simply slides down over those uh, two pins. The next step is to line things up. And for that, uh, I will install a, a pair of forceps into the holding mechanism. And I'll gently lower this and move things so they're perfectly lined up. Then, a little tough to see, but I'll uh, try to maneuver the camera so you can see. There is a little locking cam over here, which you can maneuver with your fingers or a tool. And that pushes against the wall and locks everything in place so it, it doesn't move from side to side. The last thing you need to do is to attach the cable to the top of the drop system 
and the other end of the cable goes to connection C1 on the back and like I said uh, you can't mess this up because there's no other place to plug this in. Now it's ready to be powered. Uh, the display indicates in Celsius right now the starting value is for very near the melting point of propane. Uh, I just set it to minus 185. It's actually minus 184.5. Uh, this will allow the controller to maintain the temperature of the cryogen in the condensation chamber so it doesn't uh, solidify with the liquid nitrogen uh, and it's kept at the optimal temperature for freezing. Uh, once your system is cold, and I'm not going to put nitrogen in it right now because I don't have any available, um, you would load your sample into the forceps and onto the grid you move it into the standby position. You press the drop button. The sample would be frozen. And you can move uh, your sample over to the little table, which will allow you to uh, put it into the appropriate storage container uh, for future use. When not in operation, leave it in the standby position because if you leave it up against the magnet, there is a temporary magnet strip. Um, this is magnetically actuated, so there's an electromagnet inside that reverses polarity, allowing it to drop. However, the temporary magnet strip, which helps this process can become demagnetized by the electromagnet. So it's always important to leave it in the standby position uh, when loading and unloading samples. Okay. When getting ready to cool things down, you can just pour liquid nitrogen into the doer here. And generally I'll fill it up so it's about two to three centimeters above this bottom plate, not the bottom of the doer, uh, that metal plate that mounts the condensation chamber, and let it boil off. Um, it will cool quite slowly the first time. It will take approximately four, four liters of liquid nitrogen to do so. Uh, but once it's cold, it's very stable. When the temperature is below minus 140, you can then start to introduce your cryogen into the condensation chamber. And uh, once it's full uh, and your temperature is stable at uh, either ethane or propane temperature, whatever you're working with, you can go ahead and proceed to freeze. Uh, another common question that I get is, how much nitrogen should I keep in it while I'm running samples? Uh, optimally, I leave it about a centimeter higher than this uh, bottom plate. Um, it does take a lot of power for the controller to maintain temperature. If you overfill it, it will have trouble uh, maintaining uh, the proper uh, temperature, uh, it will, which could cause your cryogen to solidify which is something you don't want to do. At the end of the day, when you're done freezing, ideally you want to put this in a, a fume hood, but you can also uh, work with it on the bench top. You just have to remember that once there's cryogen in there, you don't want it warming up because the vapors will uh, will start to accumulate and that of course is a hazard. There's an alarm set uh, on the temperature controller which will go off it if the cryogen vessel reaches minus 100 or warmer. 
Uh, you cannot shut this off unless you shut the power off. The whole idea is for you to then uh, remove the condensation chamber from the unit and then pick up that whole unit and put it in a fume hood and let it come to room temperature overnight. Then the next uh, morning you can dry everything off. Be careful not to manipulate the cables when cold. That's why I encased this in stainless steel so you can't uh, easily break it. Uh, this uh, is just some uh, wires with some Teflon coating. You can break these. That's why it's a single piece uh, that can be removed and replaced uh, if it breaks. Uh, the next morning, once everything's dry and you want to operate again, you just slide it in, makes the electrical connection, and you're ready to, to resume work.